So I was perusing Hacker News this weekend and I saw this Snake game and I thought this was absolutely incredible. A game of Snake in the URL bar. Yes, I can actually move the Snake. Look at that. Look at it go. I'm moving it back and forth, back and forth. Kinesis keyboard's not optimal for the Snake game. I'll tell you that much. Okay, wrong way. Wrong way. There we go. You can see that I'm just crushing it, right? Damn, I lost. Pour one out right there. Of course, I'm a, I'm a curious individual, and I wanted to go see exactly how this game is made, and how it's made is actually pretty dang cool, so you have to check it out. The first thing I did is I jumped on here, I looked at the GitHub, and of course, you can just find all of the code. Jumping into the actual Snake game, and then inside the Snake game, if you kind of peruse through the code, you will find this piece of code right here is exactly how the URL is drawn every single frame of the game. All right, to understand the Snake game, you need to understand the URL. It's actually pretty clever what they do here. So first off, they use document fragments. If you're not familiar with that, effectively, you can change a URL and it will not you know, save to history, so you can't use the back button and it won't reload the page. That is denoted by the hashtag. If you look closely, you'll notice those kind of weird dotted characters. That's because I use Arch, by the way. I don't know how to get my fonts to work properly. That is a Unicode white space character. This is meant to give space to the game. If you use a regular white space, it's always encoded as a percent sign 20. Therefore, it throw off all the space in the game and you couldn't actually create the game. Lastly, there's these little Braille characters. Those Braille characters represent the snake and the apple. Those are really cool. You can actually programmatically construct them, hence the reason why you have this stack of four height to the game. And then of course, it's across the URL bar, so you only get one character high. So it's pretty cool that you can create an actual snake game by only using characters that go in a horizontal line. So now to understand the Braille characters. If you've ever done any sort of downloading from the command line, you've probably seen some sort of spinner that looks like this, that kind of goes in circles to where, uh, it looks like this thing is rotating, whatever this little box is, and then it goes through each one of these little steps in here so that you can watch it kind of rotate as it's like downloading the software. You've seen that before. Those are actually just Braille characters. And when I ran into this, I just assumed, of course, it was just going to be a random, complete jumble of a mess, but it's actually not. It's actually pretty well designed. So the Braille character in Unicode starts at the offset of uh, hexadecimal 2800 and goes until 28FF meaning that there's 256 different values that can be used inside the Braille character. If you look at this little square that I've drawn, you'll notice that there is eight squares or effectively eight bits or a byte. That's 256. So exactly how it works is that if you break it down into a byte, the first three bits represent the left three in the column. The next three bits represent the right three in the column. And then the last two represent the bottom left and bottom right bits. Now, of course, if you're like me, you're probably thinking, okay, why didn't you just go straight down? That part kind of oddly designed. I'm sure there's a story behind it, but like, dog, you were already doing, you were already doing three down. Why'd you stop and go doing, doing, doing? Like, it's just so strange. Because then you could, I mean, because it would have been so simple. The upper nibble could have been the right side and the lower nibble could have been the left side, the least nibble. Or is it the lower or the least nibble? I actually don't know which, which, which way you put that. I think it's the least significant nibble is how I would say that. And for those that don't know, a bite is eight bits. A nibble is four bits. Yeah. There's been some pretty cutesy people in the computing in the computing industry, okay? So that means if I wanted a Braille character that had, say, this one, this one, and then this one highlighted, it would actually be pretty simple. Because again, remember, the first three go to this side. So I'd actually have to have one, zero, one. And then I'd have to have the right side, which is going to be zero, one. And then the rest are all blank. So then it'd just be a bunch of zeros after that. There we go. It'd be this value, which is going to be one, four, and 16, so 21, so the value of 21. So it would be, whatever that'd be, that would be 0x215, there you go. Oh, got it, nailed it. I'm a genius when it comes to hexadecimal. Now I said all of this because we wanna talk about how the snake game actually works, how it's rendered, and so, you know, you needed a little bit of context, okay? And so to make it just precisely clear, you can see that I'm doing binary numbers right here, and I'm just gonna do one bit at a time in binary all the way across here, 
and I'm just going to walk through and highlight each one of these characters when I run this program. All right, so there you go. You can even see everything that I just said. It goes left column, right column, then left column again, then right column again. Okay, a little strange. Again, engineer. I <laughs> did some engineering decisions of the past. Little weird, okay? I'm just saying a little weird. Computers are hell of a drugs, people. I don't know what's going on here. All right, so I created a little bit more in-depth of an example where effectively I just have this map. This could be what your snake could look like. You could see how I'd be traveling right here. And I just wanted to be able to draw that. And of course, the result looks just like this. Look at that. There's the snake. That's the shape that I had on the board. And how this effectively works is that all I do is do exactly what the game did. Is I start with the upper left-hand corner in a 2x4 block. Because remember, Brails are 2x4s. And then I just simply go down the left column, 1 and 2. So, you know, row 1 below, row 2 below. Then I go down the right column, get me the right one at my current position, 1 below, 1 below that. And then I get the bottom two, and I just shift the bits over. You can see the shifting happening right here in this farthest column right there, where I'm just shifting the bits into place. And then I just go through each one of the columns and print them once, and then do an offset into 2800. And that's how the game works. If you look at this code, that's what it's doing right here. It's just a little bit more cutesy about it. Instead of doing addition, it's just doing a bitwise or, so it's shifting over the left-hand column, the right-hand column. Notice the plus one right here. So it's moving one over or to the right and then it's doing the exact same thing down below. And that is how you get Snake in the URL bar. Obviously, there's a whole bunch of browser stuff that you have to work through, all the browser-specific implementations, but overall, this is super clever, and it's super fun, the fact that you can actually have a game that seems to work right there in the browser. And if I'm not mistaken, K goes up, J goes down, so that means I can go KL, KL. Boom, I'm moving now with H, J, K, and L. Not that I'm actually any better, but you can imagine that, oh man, I should be better, but I'm not. Turns out I'm not a snake guy. Turns out as much as I thought I was a snake guy, I'm not a snake guy. Anyways, I just wanted to show you guys this because it's just super cool and I had no idea about Braille characters and how they worked with Unicode, but it actually makes a whole bunch, I mean, okay, when I say it makes a whole bunch of sense, I mean, besides for that bottom row, it makes a lot of sense. And I'm sure somebody's gonna be in the comments being like, well, actually, the reason why, it's just, hey, I'm sure you're right, but you're wrong. Anywho, thanks for watching this. Hey, if you like this a little bit more kind of, you know, investigation into some of the technical stuff, let me know. I appreciate that because a lot of times I'm just covering the news. It's always fun just to see a super cool game and kind of what someone accomplishes just with a bit of willpower and a little bit of bit magic. Anyways, like the video. Hey, subscribe. I don't know if you know this, but we are at 910,000, okay? We are at 910,000. I'm about to get that gold plaque, okay? So that's pretty cool. A tech channel getting a gold plaque is pretty dang unusual. So hey, thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate it. And if you do actually do this, I will program live on stream React, okay? I'm, I'm fine. I've decided. I'll do it. I'll program React. Just press the sub button for me. Thank you very much. The name is the Snake Gen.